بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم the learner judges of the district judiciary and the learned members of the legal fraternity assalamu alaikum i have been requested to share my experiences since the topic is quite important relating to the legal ethics mannerism and good conduct of judges as well as the members of the bar so therefore i'll share my experiences on the subject and after the session as uh, just as tarik iftikhar has already told uh, you will be welcomed to ask any questions in order to seek any clarifications on the topic or to clear any doubts which uh, might be having you, you might be having in your minds you know the profession of law concerns both the judges and uh, the lawyers with equal force but what is the professionalism there is no exact or precise definition of what is the professional lawyer and what is the professionalism of law is but generally speaking various jurists have defined uh, the the this phraseology professionalism a dean of harvard law school has defined refers to professionalism refers to a group pursuing a learned art as a common calling in the spirit of public service no less a public service because it may incidentally be a means of livelihood pursuit of the learned art in the spirit of the public service is a primary purpose a professional lawyer i would say that a professional lawyer is an expert in law pursuing a learned art in the service of clients and in the spirit of public service and engaging in these pursuits as part of common calling to promote justice and public good i once met justice sandra de corner of the united states supreme court and she has defined professionalism as a commitment to develop one's skills to the fullest and to apply the responsibility to the problems at hand But ladies and gentlemen you have to bear in mind the distinction between the ethics and professionalism whereas professionalism provides a high standard but the ethics provides somewhat a low standard professionalism is much more wider than than the than the ethics and this is the distinction and the you know professionalism being of a higher level is expected of all the lawyers as the same imposes no official sanctions although although the legal ethics has been provided for both the judges and the lawyers but so far as the professionalism is concerned it has no basically no official sanctions i have seen that in the rare of the rare cases even the judges have been found to be dishonest rare rarest of the rare cases the judges have been found to be dishonest but without any violation of any principles of the code of ethics or code of conduct so you can uh, find the ways and means 
how to break, how to how to break the law. But so far as the professionalism is concerned, I think it is a perfect uh, antidote of the character of of a judge as well as a lawyer in the profession. There have been actually some principles laid down for the conduct of the judges in various instruments. Since we happen to be in an Islamic state, therefore our, our foremost duty is to abide by the code of conduct of judges which were actually uh, performing their duties in a truly speaking Islamic state in its historic perspective. Hazrat Ali Ta'ala Anu, the fourth caliph, he issued instructions to Malk Ashtar, who was at that moment, at that time, he was governor of Egypt regarding the role and conduct and code of ethics for the judges in an Islamic state. And I would like to uh, read some of the principles. Havatali says that abundance of litigation and complexity of cases should not make the judges lose their temper. This is one of the foremost morals. A judge should never lose his temper under any circumstances. He should be a patient listener of the litigant public or as the case may be the lawyers representing the litigant public. A judge who loses his temper would never make a good judge. Then the second principle is that the judges should not be corrupt, covetous or greedy. They should not be satisfied with ordinary inquiry or scrutiny of cases, but scrupulously go through all the pros and cons. They must examine every aspect of the problem carefully. They must exhibit patience and perseverance in scanning the details. They should not develop vanity and conceit when compliance and praises are showered upon him. You know the arrogance and stiffness is alien to the office of a judge. They must pass their judgments without fear, favor or prejudice. This is very important. A judge is required to be very impartial. And impartiality means without any prejudice or bias, for or against any of the parties litigating before a judge. You know, the justice should not only be done, but it should be seen to be done and even the slightest doubt as justice having not been done will of course it will uh, reflect upon the integrity of the judges. In the English word actually the standard of integrity and impartiality is very very strict. I remember a case, a recent case 
of one general pelouse who ruled Chile for about 27 years and after he was overthrown or, or a democratic government has taken place then he came over to England to seek an asylum and there actually a campaign was launched against him during his stay in England that he should be tried for crimes against humanity. The case went to the House of Lords. At, the, at that time, the House of Lords was the apex court so far as UK is concerned. And uh, the case was decided against uh, General Pinochet that he had no immunity as former president of Chile for, from trial but uh, he, he could be tried against uh, commission of uh, crimes against humanity. So therefore his uh, appeal was turned down by the House of Lords. After about three or four months, a review petition was filed in the House of Lords on the ground that one of the law lords, namely Lord Hoffman, uh, was biased, at least uh, reasonably it could be said that he was biased against General Pinochet on the ground that his wife was secretary of Amnesty International Charity Limited which had linked with the Amnesty International who was championing the campaign against General Pinochet and the objection was sustained by the House of Lords and the judgment against Pinochet was then reversed and what was the consequence can be well imagined Lord Hoffman who was otherwise very very competent judge and a noble person he had to step down that is how his end came so this is the strict uh, actually yardstick of impartiality or bias uh, of the judge against the party. So therefore, impartiality actually even in the case where it seems that uh, there are genuine suspicions of a party or particularly in criminal matters by the accused that he may not get justice from a particular judge. So it is better to recuse. Recusal is better than hearing the judges with, with closed minds or with biased minds. Then you know, you, uh, you find that some of the liars actually they, they indulge in flattery of the judges and judges should, should basically uh, shun against such a tendency, they should discourage such uh, a tendency and uh, there is another reason that uh, judges should uh, hear the cases impatiently they should listen the cases there are uh, a few judges a very very few judges who do not uh, listen the cases patiently and uh, you know a great jurist of uh, great britain as he remarked in one of his uh, one of the books, the Constitution of uh, England, uh, Mr. Bagot, that uh, the the, the uh, a deaf judge is, is the worst judge. So therefore, actually, hearing uh, uh, accorded to, uh, to a litigant patiently will naturally enhance the prestige of the judges and uh, consequently the institution. Then judges should be very punctual and they should be properly dressed while uh, you know uh, presiding over the court a casual dress probably will not augur well with the general public as well as with the legal profession and then uh, i have experienced that some judges have inculcated the habit of criticizing uh, some of your colleagues and so not only their own colleagues, even the senior colleagues and even the judges of the superior courts. I think uh, 
it is high time that such practice should be discontinued and discouraged because if you criticize the other judges basically you are criticizing your own self and the, and the institution to which you belong to then uh, the, the judges actually should uh, decide the cases in the presence of both the parties it is not a wise practice that to hear one side uh, one one side at the first uh, at one time and then of course in the absence of the one side you hear the other side hearing the both sides in their presence uh, is is a salutary principle of conduct of judges then i would uh, uh, further say that the judges uh, should be well behaved while presiding the court or even otherwise rashness with the litigant and probably because the litigant public is, is, is they, they they are the aggrieved parties and uh, the the good behavior of a judge good conduct means the good behavior so therefore it is uh, it will pay the dividends in the long run and uh, then they just should see that actually if uh, a, if they get any favor from the lawyers then they are becoming subject to exploitation by the lawyers so never never try to be under any obligation of the lawyers and then you know undesirable association with the lawyers is to be avoided because then they then the judges own integrity uh, will come under uh, question and uh, the one advice which i would say that sit in the court with open minded there was a time when even the judges did not read the newspapers so that the some case might be coming before them the next day or thereafter they would be prejudiced but now the times have changed with the with the introduction of uh, the tv and the social media and all that probably it may not be possible uh, but still i think as far as possible the judge should sit in the court with open minded ness and uh, Uh, then the other thing is that you have to abide by the administrative instructions, as well as you must read the code of conduct framed by the High Court at least once a month, so that you are reminded as to what is to be done and what is not to be done, what is to be refrained from. So I think it will be a good reminder. Then, please do not cite. the head boards in your judgments i came across a few cases in where the head boards of the case law was cited by the judges themselves neither the lawyer should read from the head boards nor the judges should actually mention the head boards in their judgments head boards are not a part of the judgment they are basically they are they are basically meant for the easy understanding the problem and the 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 question of law and they are edited by the editors of the law journals and then as far as the lawyers are concerned i would advise them that they should not cite too much case law which is applicable to a k to a particular point of law and if there is a latest judgment of the supreme court or the high court on the point then please cite it and because you have to save the time of the judges they are already overburdened with the judicial work and then precise arguments would of course be welcomed by the judges and some of the lawyers they indulge in lengthy arguments some relevant irrelevant everything uh, actually it will not uh, leave a good impression and then an advice to the lawyers is that they should not quarrel or fight with the judges apart from preparing your 
means is thoroughly you have to study the judges also in addition to the study of cases and you have to study the temperament of a particular judge some judges do not want actually uh, prolonged arguments they want to be precise they they want the the counsel to be precise and concise in their submissions and of course uh, the, the advice both to the lawyers they should not uh, actually equal with each other if a judge quarrels with the if 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 if, if a lawyer quarrels or fights with the judge actually he is likely to lose many cases by the temperament after all judges are also human beings so therefore i would say that the judges are paid to hear the cases patiently whereas actually the lawyers are paid to plead the cases and not to fight with the judges and lawyers should also go to the courts particularly the professional lawyers i have seen they 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 are found in the courts in a very casual dress some some lawyers very few lawyers of course they 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 are dressed very loudly i would say so this has to be discontinued and uh, it will it will be discouraged it should be discouraged and as far as possible the judge should enforce this discipline proper dress court court dress by the judge by the judges as well as by by the lawyers and then of course uh, while deciding the cases actually we should mind that since we are basically governed by the islamic laws therefore if there is ambiguity in a particular case or a particular point of law then you have to go by the quranic injunctions in khurshid bibi's case famous khurshid bibi's case it was a family matter it was decided by the supreme court and in reported in prd 1967 supreme court 97 there is a narration about a governor and kali of yemen who was sent by no less a person than hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the holy prophet he advised him how to decide the cases he asked him it was muaz bin jabal governor the holy prophet asked him how would you adjudicate the cases which are brought before you and was said that uh, i'll decide the cases in accordance with the injunctions of quran the, the the book of allah and then holy prophet said if you don't find any solution in the book of allah then how would you decide the cases and the answer of was was then i'll decide in the light of the traditions of the holy prophet and then holy prophet said but if you don't uh, find any solution in either uh, of the book of allah or in the tradition then how would you and said then i will i will exercise my best judgment and according to my conscience and then of course the holy prophet was pleased with that answer actually the case should be decided and uh, since actually the religion and morality uh, they are very very interlinked and this that provides the moral basis religion has always very influence on the law and the morality you know you you take the institution of the marriage which is prevalent which is in vogue from times immemorial so therefore actually it will provide you a clue what is the morality 
and without there being a morality and the religion probably uh, the society uh, would have been in a great disarray unless uh, regarding the this marital mar- mar- relations between man and woman the lawyers are also required that they should be punctual they should not take the cases very lightly but very seriously because uh, the the stakes are very high and uh, in the last i would say that since we have inherited the legal system from the western society and we find that there is no overcrowding of lawyers there not only that even the quality of assistance is very high from the lawyers and that is what is expected there is no question of any doubts in the in the west but we should seriously think about all these things whether uh, uh, it is advisable it is desirable to continue with uh, some with, with such practices because in the past even the bar councils have and you know disqualified and dismembered uh, some of the lawyers that they were engaging uh, they did the doubts for soliciting the work for them now i want to uh, welcome any questions or clarification from any of the members of the judiciary and as well as the members of the bar Yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes कन्फ्रंट किया जाए कि जी आप रेफरेंस बना के भेज दें तो अप्रोप्रिएट तरीका क्या है कि जैसे आपको रेफरेंस बना के भेज देना चाहिए कि मेरा तो यही ख्याल है कि अहमद अहमद को मेरा ख्याल है कि जज को भेज देना चाहिए बिल्कुल अगर कोई वाकई में समझता है कि कोई रीजनेबल ग्राउंड्स हैं तो ही शुड नॉट बेसिकली हेजिटेट हिमसेल्फ फ्रॉम रेफरिंग द केस टू द डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज इफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज इज द हायर कोर्ट and in the case of the district judge to the high court or even the district judge can okay, suppose or no uh, uh, of course but at the same time you have to maintain you know the dignity of the uh, judiciary also not at the cost of so i think right? i i think so uh, but, but there if there is a genuine cause but not frivolous sometimes okay. the, just that you are not getting your leave from the judge and you can say that you are biased this is no ground very very cogent ground should be there reasonable grounds not flimsy grounds okay. yes because you know the, the uh, ultimately the stream of justice should uh, remain clear and serene you know, there have been cases in which the actual bias uh, uh, may be there and the uh, an accused should not get the impression that although suppose if uh, one of the parties is relatable uh, related to a judge what will happen then what will be the impression of the litigant public so this will be a case where actually the judge should not hear the case himself maybe there is some pecuniary interest of a judge in, in a particular case or other considerations oblique considerations even you know in america i find that uh, uh, a judge was entitled to retain a percentage of the fine which was which would uh, which would be imposed by a judge and the supreme court of the united states held that uh, actually the, the, the such a provision uh, was even invalid and unconstitutional because um, in the interest of, he had the pecuniary interest and therefore 
such a judge would find much more than the normal uh, uh, the case in order to get more percentage of the uh, of the fine it was legally allowed but such such a provision was uh, uh, had to be ultra varies sir thank you thank you yes anyone else is sir zafar ibal sir from asj faisla bar ji ji sir sir जी सर जैसा कि योर लाल शेर ने फरमाया है कि जज शुड बी वेरी पेशेंट तो आजकल जैसा कि प्रैक्टिस है कि जिस पार्टी का केस नहीं बनता उसके लायर्स जो है वो लंबी बहस करते जाते हैं और कोई उसकी लिमिट नहीं है कि कितना टाइम एक पार्टी में लेना है तो अगर एक मतलब पार्टी जो है वो बिल्कुल ही उनके कौशल जो है वो इेलिमेंट और कितनी बहस करेगा क्या करेगा ये भी है अगर आप क्वेश्चन करेंगे तो फिर बहस लंबी होती जाएगी ये भी अन्य क्वेश्चन ना करे हाँ और दूसरा ये है कि बाकी के जो वेस्टर्न कंट्री में तो ये सिस्टम है कि दे बेसिकली लिमिट दी आवर्स ऑफ आर्गूमेंट्स लेकिन अभी ये सिस्टम जो है अभी तक यहाँ पर डेवलप नहीं हो सका वो लीगली मैं आपको बताऊँ वहाँ पर तो फिक्स कर देते हैं कि इतनी देर में आपने खत्म करना है दैट इज एंड ऑफ दी बैटर एंड देर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ ह्यूमन अर्जेंटमेंट्स एंड आई रिमेंबर ए केस वे फादर ऑफ ए लॉयर हैड पास वे and he was to attend a funeral but still the case was not adjourned but unfortunately we don't have uh, any such system in place here yeah maybe today aur ye jo hai ye jo aapko question hai ye to bar council ke sath milke hi apna ye sato to ha bilkul aa rahi thi aa rahi जी सर मेरी क्वेश्चन जी हाँ आप कौन है मेरा नाम सर जफर इकबाल सिंह कंपनी गेट डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके ओके यस 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 सर आपको किसी भी केस में कोई आपका इलाके का कोई पार्टी अप्रोच करती है या किसी भी जगह से आपको कोई अप्रोच की जाती है किसी भी केस में हाँ या कोई ऐसा केस होता है कि जो पार्टी आपकी कोई दूर बार की रिश्तेदार होती है या जिनसे आपका ताल्लुक होता है आप वो रेफरेंस बना के देखते हैं एक रेफरेंस बना के भेजते हैं डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड सेशन जैसे आप बोलते हैं सर मैं इस केस में नहीं सुनना चाहता ड्यू टू सम पर्सनल रीजन या अनअवॉइडेबल रीजन ठीक है तो जैसे आप, आपका जो रेफरेंस है उसको डिक्लाइन करके दोबारा आपको भेज देते हैं कि नहीं आप ही इसका फैसला करें तो या डेरी प्रोसीडिंग पार्टी कहती है कि हमें आप पे ट्रस्ट नहीं है आप ये हमारा केस जो है इसका रेफरेंस बना करके और जब हम उसका रेफरेंस बना के डिस्ट्रिक्ट सब को भिजवा देते हैं वो डिक्लाइन कर देते हैं हमारा रेफरेंस और वो आगे डायरेक्ट करते हैं कोर्ट को के आप उसका फैसला करें फिर इस एरियो में फिर कोर्ट को क्या करना चाहिए इसका मतलब फिर आप जो तो है आपने तो डिस्कलोज तो कर दिया ना जी तो फिर नेचुरली वो तो फिर अगर डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज का ऑर्डर है वो नहीं मानता कि ये कोई ग्राउंड नहीं है तो फिर तो आपको सुनना पड़ेगा और क्या करेंगे आप देखें वो तो जुडिशियल आर्डर को हो गया ना जी बिल्कुल उसमें तो फिर आप रिकूज नहीं कर सकेंगे ना लेकिन ये है कि आप बेहतर ये होता है ऐसे केसेस में कि आप डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज को बता दें पहले इन कॉन्फिडेंस में देखे ना कई चीजें जो है ना ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट हुए नहीं होता डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज को बता देंगे जी मैं रीजन नहीं एक्चुअल रीजन नहीं लिखूंगा रीजन लेके लेकिन ये मामला हुआ है और फिर डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज साहब को फैसला करें बस अल्लाह ना खास उनको इन्फॉर्मली भी बता दिया जाए वो तो नहीं कि आपने ये लिखना कि फलाम बंदा मुझे मिला था और अप्रोच किया था और ये वगैरह सारा डिटेल देने की जरूरत नहीं है उसमें आप इन्फॉर्मल डिस्ट्रिक्ट जज के साथ इंटरव्यू करके उसको बता दे कि ये हुआ है और अगर आपने रास्ता सुन दे तो किसी दूसरी स्टेट में भेज दें बस अल्लाह ना खास टैक्चुअली भी तो होना चाहिए ना
टैक्सफुल जांच को टैक्सफुल भी होना चाहिए एट द सेम टाइम जैसे मैंने कहा कि लॉयर्स को स्टडी करना चाहिए जजेस के टेम्परामेंट को उनके हैबिट्स को किस तरह वो कर किस तरह सुनना चाहते हैं पता होना चाहिए दिस इज मच मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एवन दैन द स्टडी ऑफ द केसेस एंड द केस लॉ ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यस यस जी 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 सेक्शन 115 ऑफ द सीपीसी और उसमें इंटरप्रिटेशन यही है कि केस जो है ना केस मींस केस नॉट द मिसलिनियस मैटर्स उसमें बहुत सारा केस ला है जरा वो भी जरा देख लेना उसमें मिसलिनियस एप्लीकेशन आर नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन द केस नहीं मे बी मे बी द प्रिंसिपल्स कैन बी वो इफ देयर नो अदर प्रिंसिपल तो वो देखना पड़ेगा बट एट द सेम टाइम यू हैव टू फॉलो द जजमेंट ऑफ द हाई कोर्ट दैट इज द केस दैट इज द लॉ डिसाइडेड बाय द हाई कोर्ट एंड यू आर बाउंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ आर्टिकल 201 ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टू फॉलो द लॉ लीड डिक्लेयर बाय द हाई कोर्ट इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ ए सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट टू द कॉन्ट्रेरी Yes, of course, but you know the bail matter is not a part of trial.
where uh, a huge quantity was recovered from an accused. He was caught red-handed from a vehicle. And then the president of the bar, uh, Mr. Bar uh, D.G. Khan at that time, he, while the uh, accused was uh, still in custody of the police and be, uh, be being investigated, he made an application after arrest to the district judge for grant of uh, bail and uh, till the disposal of the bail, bail application uh, for the grant of, you know, interim bail. And judge just, just issued, a, this session judge issued a notice and uh, to the state and on this the president of the bar was denied that uh, Mr. District Judge, you are not cooperating with the bar. And then a complaint was made on telephonically to the, to the, to the then uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And I know what happened to the district judge. So, but this is very unfortunate. You know, you have to, you being uh, uh, you know, uh, the member of the Bar Council, an active member of the Bar Council, you have been offer bearer of the High Court Bar Association also. So you please uh, th think over all these problems very seriously and take up the matter at the Bar level, Bar Council level, if it is possible to remedy such uh, uh, evils. It's a very serious thing, of course. So we can, no, no, no one can, can hope that uh, you know, justice will be dispensed. Rather, in such circumstances, the justice will, of course, be not not dispensed, but dispensed with. I would say. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. That's a bad problem. Canon of professional ethics revised कर रहे हैं अब आप बार काम से आपकी कोई suggestions वगैरह होंगी बिल्कुल बिल्कुल ethics के अंदर जो Ahmed Ahmed मैं दे दूँगा Ahmed मैं दे दूँगा yes yes I'll Ahmed I will be I will glad absolutely I'll be glad एक तो ये है मैं आपको बताऊँ कि जो जजेस की जो appointment होती है ना उसको भी बड़ा आप देखना पड़ेगा कि उसके लिए एक्चुअली जैसे मुझे याद है वो एक लिंडस थे लॉर्ड लिंडस ही वाज लॉर्ड चार्सर ऑफ इंग्लैंड तो ही वाज आस्क्ड दैट व्हाट वर द कंसीडरेशन विच वेट विद हिम फॉर अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ जजेस ही सेड कि वेल द मोस्ट कंसीडरेशन फॉर मी दैट ए पर्सन टू बी अपॉइंटेड Actually, unless you know this overcrowding of the uh, this profession is not curbed and checked, actually these problems are going to multiply. I'll be glad to make my suggestions, uh, Mr. Ahmed. I'll convey to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for hearing me, and uh, of course I'll try to do my best in answer to your questions. Thank you very much.